Good morning and a very warm welcome to our Sunday morning service here in, in Peterhead Congregational Church. We bid you welcome wherever you're joining us from and we pray that as we worship together that God in his grace and mercy will, will bless us, each and every one of us. Just a, a word to say that um, next week we'll be sending out, um, a, a, for everyone that gets a DVD normally, they usually get two DVDs, one of the Bible study and one of the Sunday morning service. And next week, when you get your DVDs, there will be five of them. And that will cover next Sunday, the 20th, Christmas Eve, both services, and two services on Sunday, the 27th. Everyone else who watches on YouTube will be able to get these services as they come up. But for folks with DVDs, it's important that you know that you're going to get a bundle of them. And for the folk that get them by post, you'll get three envelopes because it's cheaper to send that way than to pay the postage um, that they want for sending you five. So um, we're not wasting money. We're doing it um, the cheapest possible way. So we look forward to be able to get them out to you at the start of next week so that you have everything and plenty of time for right through the Christmas season. The psalmist writes, And he will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, and through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days the righteous will flourish, and prosperity will abound until the moon is no more. Let's worship God together and sing to his praise and his glory our first hymn, as with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold. The words are on your screen.
Let's pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, as we gather into this place this, e this morning, we come to bring our praise and our worship to you. We thank you, mighty God, that we find ourselves in this third Sunday of Advent. We thank you that, that the, the joy of, of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into this world as an infant is already impacting upon our lives and that men and women and children are preparing, preparing to celebrate, preparing to meet together. And this year of difficulty that we've had, for some families, this might be the only time that they've been together for quite some time. But we pray, Father, that you would be in the middle of all our gatherings and all our meetings together, and that you would keep us safe at this time. We know that this coronavirus continues to, to be amongst the people of our land, and so we pray that you would keep us safe. But more than that, Lord, we pray that at this season you would open up the hearts and the minds of men and women and children and help them celebrate in spirit and in truth, not just about the food and the decorations and the, and the parties and so on, but instead to celebrate in the joy of knowing you within their hearts and within their lives. So, Lord God, we would earnestly pray that you would encourage each and every one of us to be willing this Christmas season to speak forth the name of Jesus Christ, wherever we might be, that we might share his name freely and openly to the saving of souls. Lord, as we gather for worship, we pray that you would be at the very center of all that we would seek to do. We pray that you would lead us and guide us. And as we say that, Lord, the first thing we would ask of you is that you would now lead us into repentance of our sins. For we would confess that we have sinned against you. We have wandered from you. We have set off perhaps to, to do things the way you would have us do them and then taken so many shortcuts that we're not able to do what you wanted us to do. Forgive us when we wander, when we get it wrong. Forgive us when we don't have time for those who are in need. We don't have time to stop and speak to this person or that person. Forgive us when we select who we would speak to and almost shun other people. Lord, in this world, as your son walked the the roads and through the desert places, he touched the lives of all and spoke to all. Help us to be like Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Challenge us in these days that lie between now and Christmas to, to, to serve you in all our ways. Challenge us to be reading your word. Challenge us to be following in your footsteps every moment of the day. Lord, we pray that you would forgive our sins and that you would restore us in your sight. Your restoration is complete and full. It is never partial. So take us with all our faults and failings the way that we are and make us and shape us 
into what you would want and want to have us be. Lord God, this Christmas season, may our hearts be filled with love and hope and peace and joy as we seek to serve Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We ask all of this in his name, and we pray in the words which Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we would sing again in our, our second hymn this morning, um, as angels from the realms of glory wing your flight through all the earth. The words are on your screen.
we turn now to God's Word. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Old, sorry, from the New Testament, um, from Matthew chapter 11, and reading from verse 1. The Gospel according to Matthew at chapter 11, and there at verse 1. Hear the word of God. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forcefully men lay hold of it. And forceful men lay hold of it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a, did, a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they sat, he, I'm sorry, and they say he is a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her accusations and actions. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and to his name be all glory and praise. As we come now to our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, it's been a remarkable week really when we think that already there are folks who are being um, vaccinated um, for, with this new COVID vaccination, and that we can see pictures of that happening across our land. And, and surely we hope and pray that the vaccine works and that it helps people and that those, they need a second dose, as we know. But we should all be at prayer, praying for God to intervene to remove this pestilence from our lives. For when the people of God pray, 
God acts. Therefore, let us pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, we thank you for the skills that you placed into the hands of those who have manufactured and made this vaccine. We thank you for all those volunteers who gave themselves up to be injected with it and, and for all the research that's been done. And we pray that as this vaccine begins to, to spread amongst people, so we pray that we might begin to look forward to some kind of normality back in our lives. We know, Father, that there's quite a way to go as only a small number of people will be able to be given the vaccine at this time. But we know that more will come and we know that more is being made and, we, and that others are being produced as well. And so we pray, Father, that all the skills that you have placed in the hands of men, that your guidance and your leading will bring them through and, and bring glory to your name. We pray for the difficulty that we find ourselves in this week also as the Prime Minister travels back and forward and as negotiations all about Brexit are, are continuing and, uh, to, to be discussed. Lord, at this moment in time, truly people are more concerned about their health and about their well-being. We know that these are important talks. But we pray that all politicians on both sides will listen and seek your will. That might seem like a frivolous thing to say. But you can do all things, Lord. And we pray that their hearts and minds would be open and that they would take counsel from you. Now we remember folks who are in hospital at this time with COVID-19. Those in intensive care units and, and, and those in other wards there. And we remember all those nursing and looking after them. We remember those carers. And we remember those staff and residents and nursing homes in different parts of the country where there's been an outbreak in, inside them. And we pray that all will be done to keep everyone safe. Lord, so much hurt, so much grief, so many tears, so many difficult situations. We cannot deal with all of these. But you can. Because you sent your son into this world to take away our burdens from us. Lord, we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ would be visible to all, that they might see him and cast their burdens upon him. Lord, we are mindful of the, the life and the witness of the church. And we pray and give thanks for the opportunities that you've given to us to continue to be able to meet in our own homes, certainly, but we have been able to meet. We thank you for all those who have been involved in making the services possible week after week. We pray for those in our number who are waiting for hospital appointments, waiting for operations that have been put off. We are waiting for those, praying for those who are waiting on results and waiting on tests. We remember the families who have been struck down by grief because of this illness and other illnesses. So for all who are mourning, for all who are bereaved at this time, we pray that your peace, your love and your grace will be sufficient to meet their need. We thank you for the continued spread of the gospel. 
And we thank you, Father, that here in our town, we and others are ever willing to share the good news of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to ever seek to do that, to ever want to share the truth of Jesus with all. We thank you for the hope and the promise that he brings to us. And we pray, Lord God, that you, in your grace and mercy, would remain with us. Now, we pray for our families and our friends. We pray that you would uphold and strengthen them. And perhaps there's folks going to be traveling from one part of the country to another. So we pray especially when meeting together can cause this virus to, to grow again. Lord, we pray that in your grace and mercy you would hear our prayer and that this might be continue to be suppressed. Lord, we pray for those who are far away from you at this time, and we earnestly pray that in your grace and mercy you would reach out and draw them near to you. Now in the quiet, we would bring our own prayers and petitions to you. Lord, you know our hopes and our prayers and our aspirations. We lay them all before you. Father, we pray for those who, in our emergency services, who continue to, to work and maintain the, 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 the emergency service that, that, that all around us. We pray for our police. We pray for those working in shops for everyone who has to face and face with the public, we ask your blessing and your protection upon them. And for us, Lord, keep us, each one of us, safe in your will, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the hymn before the sermon is number 47, Away in a Manger is our next hymn. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. And the words will be on your screen.
Shall we pray together? God, our Father, as we come to look now to your word, so we pray that you would open up your word for us. Open up your word that we may know your, your will and your purpose for us. Open up your word that we might be taught this night by you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we turn to God's word this morning and we read from Matthew's gospel, and the gospel message um, reminds us here of this time um, in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ when John the Baptist has been put in prison and Jesus is, has um, a, a let, been speaking and teaching his disciples and then starts to move around uh, in Galilee through the towns and villages of Galilee and begins to preach and teach there. <coughs> and no matter where the Saviour, <coughs> pardon me, no matter where the Saviour went to teach, no matter what town or what village he went into, we know that the people were clamouring round about him. And, and in a wee minute or two, we'll, we'll look at the part which reminds us of that in this text that we've read um, this morning. We're reminded how, as I say, that John's in prison, and he hears in prison that, that Jesus is, is moving about in the city and in the towns, telling people the, the, the message of hope. We're not far away from, from Christmas. The third Sunday, there's only one Sunday left between now and Christmas Day. And, and I'm sure we'll all know as, uh, uh, that, that that means that there's not much time left at all because days are disappearing faster than you could think that they are. And before we know where we are, Christmas will truly be upon us. We're singing Christmas carols, and Christmas carols are always good to sing because they're filled with great theology. They're filled with all the doctrines of the church, all the doctrines of Christ, all full of the Word of God, proclaiming the birth of Jesus Christ. There's great news to tell. And, and these Christmas carols tell that news. It's a pity, really, that we only ever sing them round about Christmas. And it would, maybe we should just be singing them at other times of the year as well, just simply to remind us of the great news and the great thing that God did when he broke into this world and placed his son exactly where he wanted him to be. Now here, John, as we said, is in prison. And maybe we might think to ourselves, well, you know, if John's in prison, that's him out the picture. John was in prison because he was baptizing. He was in prison because Herod didn't like what he was saying. He was in prison because John was dangerous in the eyes of many. Because what he was doing was preparing the way for the Savior to come. We read um, in the latter part of uh, verse 10. I will sit, verse 10, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. So John went to prepare the way. Now we know that. He was the one to, who would come and make rough places straight so that the, everyone was, was ready. He had a call to repentance. He was baptizing people in the River Jordan. He was calling them to repent of their sins and to come and, and, and wait on God. He was speaking about the Messiah that would come. And remember 
that was not a, 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 a new thing for people to speak of the Messiah that would, be, would come in the temple, as we've said many times, in the temple courts day and night without ceasing there would be those whose work it was to pray without ceasing for the Messiah to come. And the Messiah came. The Christ child came. And we know the story. No room, no room. Born in the cattle shed. Having to escape away into Egypt. When Herod dies, he comes back and, and is brought up in an ordinary place by an ordinary family, his mother and father and his brothers and sisters around him. But no ordinary child. He had a ministry that even in his young age he would know, indeed, as we've remarked before, even in the gifts in which he was given the gold, and the frankincense and the myrrh. Why would you give a child a bottle of myrrh, that oil for anointing someone who was dead, even in his birth? His death foretold. His death for you and me. And here, John has a question that he wants to ask, and he's desperate to ask this question. Because John knows that he's not going to be in prison for long. That Herod wants him not to be on this earth. He wants him to be put to death. And John says um, in, in the latter part of, or into verse 3, the latter part, Are you the one who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? So John sends his disciples to ask Jesus that question. Are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? Now that's a good question. It's not difficult. It's not convoluted. It's pretty straight. Are you the one we are waiting on or are you not? Are somebody else coming after you? That's what he asks Jesus, that's what he sends his disciples to ask. The truth is that John knew the answer to that question. Remember, John was the one who baptized Jesus in the Jordan and the Holy Spirit descended at that time. When John saw him, he said, you know, to him, I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not worthy to untie your shoes. And here he sends his disciples. So we have to ask why he sends his disciples. If he knows the answer, why would he send his disciples to ask this question? And you see, the question needs to be answered. But who's going to receive the answer? It, John knows it already. But what he wants when he sends his disciples is he wants his disciples to hear the answer. He wants them to believe. He wants them to understand. And so in asking that question of them, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? John's disciples are the focus here, not John. John's played his part. John's done all that he needed to do. He is the one who has most certainly prepared and called people to be ready for the coming of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he himself was a, a child given by God. And how important it is that his role is not forgotten here. And so they go and they ask Jesus... And Jesus says to them, go back and report to John what you hear and see. Now, the first thing is they've carried this question in their minds and in their hearts all the way to they found Jesus and then they've asked him that question. And Jesus says to them, go back and report to John 
what you hear and see. So you see, they will have to wait and listen and see what it is that God has planned for them to know. Listening and seeing. You know, uh, in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, there are many, many passages in the, the authorized version that would begin with the words, hearken and behold, listen and see. Two important things for us to do, listen and see. And one of the things that's most important is for these men who have come to see Jesus to be standing there and asking the question, and they are going to listen to what he has to say, but they're also going to see what he does and what he has done and what is it that he has done. And so that we don't need to guess what Jesus has done, he remarks, he tells them, and he says to them, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Now by those words, when these disciples go back and tell John by those words, John will receive his confirmation of what he already knows, but his disciples will most surely have been touched by the word of God, by Christ himself, and by that message that he said to them. He said to them all these things. You know, remember, the days in which we live in here, and are the days in which we're reading about here, are days when any kind of illness can lead to, to certain death. Certainly, if the illness is bad enough, you might even be cast out from your family for fear that whatever that you've got, they might have as well. These are hard days, difficult days, days when people don't know how to help, how to reach out and so on. And Christ says to them in this, he's telling them that he has been in amongst all the people that no one else would want to be amongst. He's been in amongst those who couldn't see, in amongst those who were lame and unable to walk, those who were lepers. He's given um, hearing to the deaf, the dead have been raised from the dead. And above all of that, the good news has been preached to the poor. That is, to the poor in spirit. Now, all of these things together are, are important because the works of Christ are the very things that would draw people to him. Today, when we think, when we want to learn more of Jesus, what do we do? We open up the pages of our Bible and we can go to any part of it and read there the marvelous things that Jesus did. Any gospel to sit down and simply sit and read through a whole gospel it sounds as though you're being given some kind of terrible task to do. And it is not a terrible task. But if you can take time, sometime over this Christmas, when you're fed up with folk about you, or, you're, or the television's no good, or you've had your dinner, and, and you're fed up eating turkey again, well, maybe there's a corner in your house where you could go and sit down and open your Bible and read a gospel from the first page to the last page. It's, on, it's only some a few pages, really. It does not take long. But to read it in one go, one book, one, one time, gives you a different insight into it. Because it all kind of falls better into place when you can do that. You know, we're used in church to reading 
a wee bit here and a, a wee bit there. And sometimes, like this morning, we read those first 19 verses. And we read the 19 verses not to fill in the time, but because whatever we're speaking about has to be put in its proper setting. We must read what we're speaking about before and what comes after it. It's all very important that we know exactly where it is and why we're reading it from there. But this morning, we're just looking at, at just a few short verses. But they're filled with such importance as we turn our thoughts to it. Because you see, the moment that Jesus tells these disciples this, they're off. They're going away back to John. They've seen, they've heard, and now what is it that they are? They become witnesses to what's been done. They are the witnesses as well as the disciples of Jesus. John's disciples become witnesses. They can go and tell him and in the process tell others. And so the word of Jesus, the, the ministry of Christ begins to grow and spread and, and, and so on and so forth. Today it's easy in many ways to spread the word. We, we see that in our, uh, when I say easy, I don't mean that it's, a, uh, that it's not hard work, but, but you know, today by using technology, imagine me saying that, my congregation will be really amazed that I'm using that word technology. A few months ago, I couldn't have spelt it. And, and here we go, we're using technology and we're touching the lives of folk that we would not be able to touch. I was listening to a service in the house the other day from, from a church in, in Northern Ireland, and, and it was a young minister who was speaking, and he, he, he remarked how, you know, over the years, the, the congregation had remained pretty steady, and, and they'd gone from a congregation of about 50 folk, and they were getting over 100 people, or 100 views on YouTube. And 100 views means 200 people are watching the service. 200 folk, and they were getting 50 folk. Whose work is that? That's the Lord's work. We can be slow to do these things or pick these things up, but God uses us and all that we have, all the skills that we have, to take the message and send it forth. You see, the only way that people could learn there was by word of mouth. The only way that folk knew what Jesus was doing is if someone told them. So the miracles, the, the giving sight to the blind, the lame walking, the cured lepers, the deaf hearing, the dead standing up out of the grave are all vitally important because these are amazing things. They would be amazing things today. Never mind then. But above the whole thing is that last phrase. And the good news is preached to the poor. There's not a lot of good news in our world. This week, having said that, as we said earlier in the prayer, this week we see folk getting the, the, the injection for coronavirus and so on and so forth. But there's not a lot of good news in many, many places. In many places, you know, wars are imminent. In many places, people's lives have never changed. In many places, people are hungry and thirsty for the word of God. In many places, people are clamoring to, to, to hear about Jesus Christ, to help them. I wonder if people are clamoring for the word of God in the United Kingdom today. We would say as believers that this land of ours needs that word. That people need the Lord in their life and, and I and I'm sure we believe that fully and completely. And we know 
the benefit of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that benefit. Now, friends, somehow we have to continue to share that great truth. And the best way that we can do that is to, as Christ did, overarch everything we do by preaching the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> what is that good news for you this Christmas? The good news which you will hear again and again and again from this pulpit is this. That Jesus Christ died for you. That Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. And that Jesus Christ is waiting for you to say yes to him. To t realize that you need him. And the moment that you cry out to him, he will enter your life if you truly seek him. And the promise is that he will not leave. That he will come and he will stay and he will abide. I cannot say enough. It does not matter what you did yesterday. Or what you did 10 hours ago, 2 hours ago, 1 hour ago, 15 minutes ago. 1 minute ago. It only matters that you reach out to the Savior and call on his name. And when you call upon the name of the Lord, the scripture says, you will be saved. Every week we preach that message. Every time we gather morning or evening, that message has to be sent forth. That doesn't mean we use the same text or the same words but the whole scripture points us to the need to be saved in Christ. And that's the good news. Because that good news means your sins are forgiven. And you have the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. And that's offered to you and to me. When we seek Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives. This Christmas time, seek the Lord while he may be found. For he waits for you to call on him. Shall we pray together? God, we thank you of the witness of John the Baptist. We thank you that he had the wisdom to send his disciples so that they might learn more of Jesus and they might see more of him and then they might speak more of him. But we also give thanks that they came back with that message of the need for the gospel to be preached, the good news to be preached to the poor to the poor in spirit. If we are without you, Father, then our spirit is truly impoverished. But in you, we are made rich and full. So draw near to us and to all and to those who are teetering on the brink of stepping out in faith Reach out to them, Lord, this day. Call upon them that they may hear you and respond to the call of the gospel. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we would conclude our service this morning by singing together the, our closing hymn, uh, Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Saviour came, and Jesus 
was his name. The words are on your screen. <clears throat> And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and upon your homes, upon all whom you love in this place and elsewhere, this day 
and forevermore.